So there's this article posted by Windows Central with the article artist being Daniel, Daniel Rubino, Rubino, who talks about how there's one simple trick to improve the touch responsiveness of the Microsoft Surface Duo 2. But here's the catch. You actually are going to be going ahead and reducing your battery by improving your touch responsiveness. So this is kind of a weird thing to me. Because unless you guys tell me down below otherwise, I've had no issue with my touch responsiveness at all my Surface Duo 1 or 2. I know, you know, whenever they do update these devices, they say it when the update files like improved touch responsiveness, improved, you know, like the overall functionality of the device. But I've never had an issue with touching something or touching an application, scrolling, and it actually not working. The only thing I've ever had an issue with that is actually on the Z Fold 3, the inner crease on the inner uh, middle of the display, that when you run your finger over sometimes will actually go ahead and not work correctly because the crease cannot register. Other than that, I have never had an issue with this phone. So this is actually kind of funny when I saw the title today, I, was, I thought it was kind of like a joke, like improve the touch responsiveness. The touch responsiveness is fine. But here's the trick. So despite many improvements to Surface Duo 2 uh, touch display performance, some still there's still some room for improvement. A new hack seems to improve the touch responsiveness for typing and screen interaction instantly. However, a, la a loss of some battery is expected because of the improvement. All right, so let's see what this is. Um... <clears throat> And obviously, we have a video right here, how to fix this terrible um, experience. It seems significantly change how responsive screens are on the Surface Duo 2 and presumably the Surface Duo 1. So the uh, little update or little hack you could call it is go to settings, go to apps and notifications, tap on recent apps. It doesn't matter which one it is. Um, as you can see by the app notifications, tap on recent apps. Scroll down to battery and tap it. So it says 0% use since last fully charged. Tap battery optimization. Choose all apps from the top. Scroll down and find the system UI and tap it. Okay. Don't optimize and done. So it says for don't optimize, it says may drain your battery more quickly. Apps will no longer be restricted from using the background battery. Which is a negative thing, obviously. That's why you want it to be optimized so that you actually don't have applications randomly using your battery throughout the day when you're not even using that application. You know, they say all the time, make sure you go ahead and close applications out when you're not using them. They use up data, they use up battery life, that kind of stuff. This looks like, you know, you could fool on, for example, run Pokemon Go on your phone or your Surface Duo 2. And now if you don't close it, this is going to run fully on your phone nonstop every single second until you close it. So this apparently goes ahead and makes it more responsive. So it's that you should feel the UI become more instantly more responsive. You could also repeat above steps for Microsoft Launcher, whatever keyboard you may be using. Uh, Microsoft Swift key is the default. You turn off the optimization for Microsoft Launcher in the keyboard. You should uh, restart the device to reload them. So, like I said, I have never had an issue with responsiveness on the Surface Duo 1 or the Surface Duo 2. I did try this on my Surface Duo 2. And my response is yes, it definitely is a little bit of a difference. But you're sacrificing the battery and having less battery to have a little bit of more touch resistance I, it's not to a point where i'm writing home about this or i'm suggesting you do this i mean again like i said if you are really just absolutely getting destroyed by duo one or two here's your tutorial on how to do it that's all you have to do is literally just turn off the optimization and now it will run even smoother and to the point of typing on the Surface Duo, the Surface Duo is always weird with typing anyway. You have two screens and one keyboard that splits between two screens. And you got a hinge down the middle, right? 
so there are different keyboards you can use in the Microsoft and the Play Store to kind of like, you know, count, counter the dual displays. But that's just, it's like, it's that's a little bit of a con for all the pros you're getting. <laughs> Does this help the keyboard a little bit? A tad bit. Makes it a little bit easier. But again, like I said, you know, I have had no issue with this at all. And once we get 12L, it's going to get a lot better. Now, I did see somebody comment down below and it's like, how is 12L going to make this phone better? How is 12L? First off, <coughs> the reason why 12L is so important is because if you guys do not know with Android 12, Android 12 added so many new features to Android 12. Uh, a lot of features are background features like security features, but also the ability to go ahead and customize stuff. Like there's, um, you can actually have your background set with your colors of your applications and also when you open up an application the color scheme the, again like i said a lot of customizations but there's also a lot of security features and features in the background you just don't really think about and they're nice to have add-ons to different things so it's going to get a lot better with android 12 out anyway when eventually microsoft decides to actually go ahead and pull the trigger and give us it um, and that should also improve touch responsiveness in a way because it's more optimized for affordable phones. That's why it says 12L. L is more for optimization. We see the Galaxy Z Fold 4 <coughs> running that currently. So that is going to be nice with Microsoft side to actually push that through. But again, definitely tell me down below, guys, your user experience with using this hack. If you are going to use this hack. Uh, I have not seen too much of a battery difference. Again, like I said, if you close your applications, you're smart with what you do. You don't just leave 100 applications open. You should be on the, on the decent side to be able to actually get through this without any hassle. But if you are going to be having 100 applications open at one time, you might see yourself losing battery very quickly. But me personally, even when I tried this, I tried this for a day just to see how I like after 24 hours. And it was okay i mean it wasn't like i was going from 100 to zero within 10 seconds of turning my phone on but you might lose five or six percent more than normal than you would normally have so guys definitely guys tell me down below your thoughts and opinions <coughs> we are now almost in september hopefully 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 microsoft we see a september release of the android 12l or hopefully at least something of an Android, or something of release in September for the update. But man, I'm not holding my breath on this one yet. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys on the phone. Peace out.